Good evening, everybody, and good day there in the United States. I'm Alexandra Corey from Art Tribe, and I am live with Taya Duncan of Doing Italy here in Milan. How are you doing? I'm doing so good. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> so you. she is our super, super expert on moving to Italy, and that mm -hmm. is the topic of tonight's show so we're going to be talking about your questions about moving to italy uh, from two people who are you know in some ways experts and that we've been through it but um you've really I, i'd say you've got this down to an art whereas i did this and i think all of us did it um just kind of randomly and we, we stumbled our way through the process you then codified it now you're teaching a class about it exactly well i have to say i stumbled my way through it as well And that's why I'm teaching a class about it because like, I think just about everyone who's moved to Italy, it's such a complicated process. And there's so many steps involved in learning how to do it that you're like, oh my gosh, it has to be an easier way. And that's what I decided to do to help make it easier for everybody else. So yeah, you have to go through the stuff we did. <laughs> Uh, we wouldn't want that. <laughs> we wouldn't wish it on our worst enemy. So um, I thought, you know, we'd start out by just talking a, a very briefly about how we got here. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I think I did it the easy way in some way because I came over. I was still a student. I it was 22 years ago now. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. And and I like to sort of say I, I studied and stayed. I mean, I, I came back and forth. I went away to the graduate school in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, but throughout all that time, I have to admit, I had an Italian boyfriend. And that is the easiest way to move to Italy legally. However, <laughs> this is not what we are recommending. And so what we want to do is help people who um, don't just have a Italian guy who's going to marry them right away, but maybe you want to <laughs> have a dream and, and come here. Maybe you're retiring or maybe you work remotely. You can bring over your family. So mm -hmm. um, my, my example, I think, is not the best example for everybody. What about you? <laughs> well, I guess that is and it isn't my what happened with me as well. You know, like I had an Italian boyfriend who was studying abroad at the University of Miami, which is where I went to school who convinced me to come here. Um, I had been studying Spanish for about 12 years at that point in time. And my goal had always been, is I'm going to Spain. And he said, no, but come to Italy too, <laughs> which I did. And I ended up loving Italy even more than I loved Spain. And I was like, okay, I want to stay here. I want to come back. Um, he and I broke up. <laughs> But I did end up coming back a few years later and I studied, I got my master's degree here at Bocconi University, which is considered one of the best business schools in Italy and like top ranking in Europe, thanks to scholarship from Rotary International. But like when I say that people mess up and people make mistakes is when I was going through the process and no one told me that being a person that had, gotten a degree in Italy, I could get my permit of stay as a student converted into a permit of stay for a work permit, right? And I had actually even gotten a job um, in the marketing department of Mitsubishi. And, you know, they're like, yeah, you have the job. We're just going to put everything through with, um, you know, with HR. And HR came back to me and HR said, oh, no, all the quotas are done um, for the year. And so we can't give you a position. And it wasn't true, except back then I didn't know that it wasn't true. And I it wasn't until like maybe a year later that I consulted with an immigration lawyer and they were like, oh, no, you know, you qualified, but the time is up for that qualification. And yeah, exactly. And so this is part of the reason why I'm so passionate about it, because it's like moving to any country isn't exactly the easiest thing in the world, but there's certainly ways that it can be done. It's just that there's a lack of information out there. And it's so hard to find that information. And sometimes it's so confusing and convoluted that even if it's out there, you're like, how am I going to find it? And I guess I've made it my mission to make it easier for people to move here because I love Italy so much and I, I kind of like other people enjoying it too. 
Long-winded yeah, that's, answer. That's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it's answer. the kind of thing that if you if you knew that asking an expert or you mm-hmm. know, you, you had the idea, oh yeah, I know I'm going to contact this immigration lawyer, you, know, you would then have been able to fix that problem. And I mean, I got a lot of questions, um, people writing to me by email or even Insta- Instagram direct messages, which is a very short form way to ask someone for life advice, but it does happen. Um, I get a lot of people asking me, you know, for advice about moving here. You know, how can I get a job and how can I? So what I've done is um, compile a lot of these questions for tonight for our talk. Mm-hmm. And I was going to ask you what the most challenging or frustrating um, thing you encountered as you got settled uh, in Italy was, but I think you just told us <laughs> because really getting a great job <laughs> offer and then having that messed up due to bureaucracy is um, right. pretty brutal. So yeah. I'm going to just jump in with some of these questions um, that mm. I got. This is from uh, a s- small business owner in, Can- in Canada. So she uh, would be able to bring her business and work remotely here in Italy. She was asking, is it difficult to get residents in Italy, a residency? Ah, that is a kind of, it's a, let's not call it hard question to answer. It's kind of like, it depends. So how are you trying to get residency in Italy? Are you trying to get residency because you're a small business owner? And if that's the reason, if that's the way you want to do it, yes and no. So the Italy has annual quotas, the quotas that I was talking about before, right? And so I say you can get into those annual quotas when they release them. The issue is, is that the Italian government doesn't tell you when they're going to release those annual quotas. So what I tell the students, because I have a master class where I help people move to Italy, I say, if you have a business and you basically don't want to move to Italy in any other way, and I can go into some of the other ways you can move here, Um, then I would say, make sure you have all your paperwork ready, make sure you have everything ready so that when the annual quotas get released, that you can then apply then there and then, (laughs) because it really just has to be like, let's get it in while I still have a slot. And then you have to be ready to move when that happens. So it's kind of like, wait, 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 and then go. There are a few other ways you can do it. Like you can move to Italy and study. You can study Italian because I always say, if you're going to live in Italy, it helps to speak the language. (laughs) And then you can wait to have your visa, you know, like converted when the quotas come out that way. Um, You could also get like a higher level education like I spoke about before. Um, They do have a few types of businesses where the Italian government is promoting people coming. So if you have a business in like the tech field, um, they're making it easier. Also, if you have, let's call it like an upper level degree, upper level um, management skills, something like that. They have visas where you don't have to worry about filling into the annual quotas. So there's a few other little different ways, but in the very like strict kind of basic sense, if you just want to move because you're a small business owner, you have to wait for the quotas. And then that's just a matter of like when that's going to happen. So does that answer? Well, that you know, that, that, uh, that does. And mm-hmm. these quotas are quite an interesting thing. And we have Claudia who just commented live on oh. Facebook asking if people holding citizenship in Italy fall under the quota rule. I would say Absolutely not. not. Absolutely not. So, so what are the, one of the beautiful ahead, things. No, no, you're good. You're good. One of the beautiful things about Italy, I like to say that it, Italians are all about family. <laughs> you know that living here, it's all about family. And so it's actually, it's one of those cases where it's simultaneously easy and difficult to get Italian citizenship right? So Italians, you can get citizenship just because you have Italian blood and that Italian blood could be generations back. It could be your great, great, great grandfather if necessary. The trick that you need to think about and the trick that you need to determine is when that great, great, great 
got their naturalization in another country. So Italian rules used to say, it's not that way anymore. It used to say that if a relative became a citizen of another country, they automatically gave up their Italian citizenship. And so by giving up their Italian citizenship, they couldn't pass it down to anyone else in their line. But if they didn't become naturalized, or if they became naturalized before your one less great in the family line, um, if they got naturalized after one less great in your family line um, was born, then they would have automatically passed Italian citizenship down to you. And I think a lot of people don't realize it because they're like, oh my gosh, it was my grandfather, my great grandfather, my great great grandfather, and it doesn't matter. What matters is that naturalization part. The difficult process in all of that is getting all your documents together, presenting it to the consulate because there's long waits, especially now. Um, but another thing a lot of people don't know is they can actually get all their documents together, present it in Italy and actually live in Italy legally while waiting for them to come back to them um, with whether or not they've authorized their citizenship. But the way the Italians see it, it's like, we're not authorizing you. You're still technically Italian. We're just recognizing it, which I think is right. Kind of cool. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so if you are a citizen of Italy, though, you can come here any time, right? So you can, yes. Claudia, if yes. she's a citizen, yeah. she can come. <laughs> so she's good. She's good. Yes. 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 We yes. have another question from Tammy, who is asking a number of things. So first question, mm -hmm. as a retiree, is there a minimum monthly pension that they ask for? And I think actually this question can be expanded also to all sorts of elective residency in Italy, which right. is a type of visa, um, but does have a certain amount required um, in the bank or for monthly income. Exactly. Do you happen to remember what, what that is? The number is? is, yes, it is. It's actually 32,000, 32, 32, 000. 000. <laughs> Okay. Um, I said it wrong on the last call per year, um, which I think works out to be 2,800 a month. Is that what it works out to be? Is your math good? <laughs> no. <laughs> you get a degree from Bocconi. I do not. <laughs> My degree is in art history, so no, no math. But $32,000. In the a bank year. for no, a year, you know, a year. It, it has to be basically what they want to see is that you have recurring income. And so actually this is something that a lot of people get wrong too, is that they think, oh, well, I have $100,000 in the bank or I have $200,000 in the bank or even a million dollars in the bank. Maybe if you have a million, you'd be okay. But what they're really looking to see is that you have income coming in every month. And it can be in the form of a pension or it can be in the form of rental income. So if you have an apartment or a house, wherever you're from that you rent out and you get money from that, that, um, that applies towards that elective visa. And another thing I think a lot of people don't know about the elective visa is you don't actually need to be a retiree to qualify for it. You can be, I have a friend who's 45 years old living in Rome on an elective visa. I know. Hmm. <laughs> it's pretty good for her. As but like doing like remote work. Well, what she did is before she moved to Italy, she used to flip homes. Um, and so I guess she built up quite a few, you know, quite a nice little chunk of change for herself doing that. Um, and I'm guessing she has rental income from it coming in. So not all the homes she flipped. And from what she tells me is she's so good at it now that she doesn't even need to be on. She says she can pick a home over the internet to flip and have her team flip it for her in the United States without even being there, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> so I guess if, she, if you know the market. Right. Uh... If you know the market and you have a team because she says in the years she has her team of people that does the work for her, then... Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So that's that is really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I bet I think elective the elective residency visa is a big question for lots of people. And there's this this big question. I don't. I thought this might cover up our heads. I'm gonna. <laughs> Hello.
and complicated question. Let's see. So what kind of visa would I need to do this? She has her own mm -hmm. business as an art manager, taking care of details for artists. Mm -hmm. And she would like to expand to work with other U US artists um, by taking trips to Italy, I, I guess if I understand properly and so would like to stay in Italy longer than the 90 days mm -hmm. allowed or what kind of visa so what kind of visa what are the visa options for someone who's doing sort of a, maybe shorter term work but that's not like full-time work in Italy I think that's what um Liz is asking and if I haven't fully interpreted your question maybe Liz if you want to comment some more um <laughs> My guess is that's going to be uh, a kind of work visa. Exactly. Yeah, it pretty much falls into that category we were talking about before. It's a work visa and the work visas basically divide into two categories, like traditional employee or if you are freelance or you're an entrepreneur or basically that whole other little gamut there where you're basically self-employed. Um, it's a self-employment visa, and it still comes back into play with the quotas and all the things that we were talking about, unless you can show that you have skills that's different from, let's call it general skills. Um, so if you can show that you're like a really, really good art manager, um, then maybe they'd say, okay, well, you're not in the quotas because you have a specialized, um, let's say specialized skill, that makes sense? Right, right, so mm -hmm. this is, yeah, we, we got that, we nailed that, so good job. <laughs> um, but I mean, perhaps in a case like that, um, it would be a little bit easier to just try to work around the 90 days, come and go. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 definitely. It probably just makes sense to just do the 90 days, come and go that way. Or I like to say, or you can get as, yeah, that would probably just be the best way. Yeah. yeah. So we have, I mean, a lot of questions mm -hmm. about work. Um, the first, I, this is a question for me, just to get us onto the work topic, and then and then we'll get on to the next question um, that uh, that Jen has mm -hmm. asked. But I mean, the big question is, and I get this all the time, like, how can I get a job in the arts in Italy? I'm like, well, I would love that, mm -hmm. but I changed careers to stay here. Mm -hmm. I would say it's pretty hard to find a job in Italy. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, what kind of advice can you give people about this? Or do you, you know, tell them they shouldn't? Well, what do I tell people? I always tell people to pick where you're going to live wisely if you're trying to do a nine to five job in any field, right? And I say, think about it in Frulli Venezia Giulia, which I recently made a new expat friend who's a baker there. Um, the unemployment rate is 3%. Hmm. In Milan, in Lombardia, the unemployment rate is 5%. In Calabria, the unemployment rate is 20%, right? And so that is a huge difference. And I realize a lot of people, when they're thinking about moving to Italy, they're thinking about some of the quainter, the kind of prettier, the storied places. And those storied places are beautiful, but maybe they're not the best place in the world if you're looking for a job. And maybe you're gonna have to end up in Milan, <laughs> which I, I love, but I realize a lot of people say, well, I'm not moving to Italy to be in New York of Italy, right? And a lot of Italians move up to Milan because that's where the jobs are. That's just like, that's, that's just how it is. So, if you do not want to do the traditional nine to five route, then, I mean, like, I think that's why so many of us expats end up working freelance, working online. We basically have to make our own jobs because either A, there isn't a job that we want and that we like, or B, the salary for that job is not a salary that we want or that we like. And so we say, okay, I want to live in a certain way. And in order for me to live in a certain way, I need to figure something else out. And I think a lot of people don't realize that the after-tax salary for a lot of Italians is anywhere between 1,000 to 1,500 euros a month. And it's really common here. And I'm gonna say, you can live on that. 
because you can, but a lot of us are here because we still want to have the extra income and the flexibility to travel and to enjoy the finer things in life. And I say it's possible, but you're going to have to think outside of the box to do it. Absolutely. I think we have all done some pretty interesting jobs over time and right. created, um, you know, our own niches as well. I mean, you've created right. this business. I uh, was supposed to be a professor of art history. That's what I trained in and began my career in. And then kind of with the major crisis actually in the states that changed the whole study abroad landscape, I ended up sliding into this other job. And so now I'm in communications. And I mean, it's if you I think it's very hard to have a career path and try to pursue that same path coming to Italy. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great place if you're really flexible, which I never mm. was. And I have learned to be because of, I think what, you know, what Italy has, has done to me has changed me. Mm. Um, which leads us to, you know, this, this question about when you have, if you, mm. so Jen here, has this question about self-employment taxes. Um, mm -hmm. And I would say in this, there's there's sort of two aspects. One is if you're self-employed in the States and then you have a way that you can live here uh, mm -hmm. in Italy, and that would be like the greatest possible situation. Then there's when you are a partita IVA, when you get mm -hmm. your Italian tax number right, and then you have to figure out the Italian tax system, mm -hmm. which is marvelous. Right, right. Italian taxes are a lot harder than American taxes. Um, it just is. Um, I think almost no one moves to Italy or no one starts a business in Italy and does it on their own. Everybody needs to have an accountant, la commercialista, to handle it and all that kind of stuff. But since your question is specifically about taxes, taxes in Italy are high. Yes. I think the good thing to know is that there are actually quite a few incentives for people who are moving to Italy. I don't know if you knew this because I didn't know this until I started my master class because the whole tax module, I have a module on taxes. I do not teach it. <laughs> I do not. I have an expert who's specialized in Italian taxes and also taxes for foreigners, both foreign companies and um, foreign individuals who does a fabulous job. I can actually say he's also a professor at Università Bocconi to tell you how good this man is, right? Um, but from listening to his chats, a few tips and a few things I've learned, and there's actually one tax incentive right now for people that if you make, and let's say you make $100,000 a year, and you like to use that number because it's easy for our math skills, for the first five years that you're living in Italy, you actually will only pay taxes on 30% of that income. So your taxable income then becomes $30,000 or 30,000 euros. And then of course, you then apply whatever brackets that are applicable to you for whatever reason and you know, the Italian brackets that then come into play. But that's a huge difference compared to what the Italian taxes usually are. And there are actually a few incentives that those five years can be extended to 10 years. There are also like incentives for people who retire to Italy and Southern Italy and other things that he goes into in that module. That's much better at explaining than I am. <laughs> but so did you know actually, about that incentive? That to retire to Southern Italy? No, the, the one about only paying taxes on the 30% of your income. I didn't know about it until a year ago. I did ago. not. No, yeah. And, and what I do know, well, and also because I think a lot of people that I'm, I'm you know, my friends who have set up their business mm -hmm. is here, they've maybe already been here for some time, so it's not a history move. Um, one of the things that I know is a problem or with some of the pain is that there's a fixed tax. Um, it basically is your social security, Previdenza Sociale tax um, mm -hmm. that is applied to if you're self-employed. And that that is always, always quite a high amount. And so basically you have to make quite a bit on your partita IVA in order to sort of pay off this thing and make it work. But right. yeah, there's, there's a lot of intricacies there and certainly you know, you would want to speak to a tax professional before making any decisions about that. Um, and mm -hmm. My advice would be if you are American and you have 
the uh, possibility of working remotely and legally living here because you may have citizenship or can get citizenship or any other kind of residency, that's definitely a great situation, which leads us right. to a question that I received earlier by email. Mm -hmm. find it and I can bring it back up here um, from my darling friend Jenna in California who's working right now so she couldn't hear us live but this um, question she mm -hmm. sent ahead so she's been working on building up her income from online work so that then she'll be able to go and work anywhere and, and be able to support her family um, mm -hmm. what kind of visa could you apply for if you were to, in that situation so if you are a digital nomad we had another question about right. that, or remotely working as you mm -hmm. can kind of work anywhere what how do you how do you do that it's basically oh, yeah. the same visa again yeah they don't have a specific digital nomad visa right now a few countries do italy doesn't my hope and my dream is that they eventually get one because i think they would manage to get a lot of people moving to italy if they did um, so it just goes back to the things we were talking about before, either doing, you know, a student visa, if that makes sense, figuring out how to get your um, citizenship, if you have that route to do it, or, you know, just going and applying for the straightforward freelance visa, self-employment visa, when those quotas come out. Yeah. Okay, so those, and those are things, those are quotas. So once again, you need to have that professional on your side, because you will never navigate that. I know. I mean, just like you can't even get a driver's license here without help from some kind of professional. So on a side note, did you get a driver's license here? I did. And I got my driver's license last year after almost 18 years in this country. <laughs> so. Yeah, I got it about like 12 years in. So, yeah, no, it's um the, the whole like course with the 18 year olds and the whole exam. Yeah. So it's good stuff. Oh, my gosh. So <laughs> let's see now. Um, oh, we have. I think we actually have, you know, um, this question from Vicky, which is also similar. We have a lot mm -hmm. of people who really want to move here, which is awesome. Right. Um, and Vicky's actually asking if she would qualify for an Italian passport. Um, I'm not sure we can tell given the situation and that you were saying that your grandfather was born in Trieste at the time that Trieste was part of Austria. Uh -huh. uh, tough question. I don't know the answer. Don't know if you know the answer. Yeah, to be completely sure if it's since it was the point when Trieste was part of Austria, I'm not exactly sure how that applies, right? <laughs> when we do the whole immigration module, I have an immigration specialist that comes, an immigration lawyer that comes yeah. in to talk to my students about that. So I know like the really good base level on it. And I brought him, her on because she just takes it next level. She has a PhD from Oxford in immigration law. And I was just like, I didn't know you could even get a PhD in law, but I guess you can. <laughs> Apparently you can. Yes. So I'm looking for, there was a question about, um, I can't find it anymore. There was, there's various house related questions. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm gonna bring up this one from Jesse that I got earlier by direct message. Should, so onto the housing category. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this, this came up actually in a clubhouse chat together and we were talking about buying a house uh, and renting and renovating in Italy. And the advice that came out was definitely, um, we were suggesting to people that, you know, you might want to rent in the area, you know, city or area that you're mm -hmm. thinking of living in before you go out and buy one. Um, yeah. which probably answers Jesse's question yeah. um, because what buying a house is a pretty challenging process and it can be done uh, from abroad and we have we both have we have a common friend Sean Carlos who has right. recently he was recently featured in CNN and he um, has been guiding some people and guided a couple of Americans who with Italian backgrounds to purchase a home remotely and with great mm -hmm. success but I would say that's that's tough it's not for everyone um, right. so yeah and Sean Carlos is so honest you know like Sean Carlos is probably one of the most honest real estate agents that I know, right? And so I could say if Sean Carlos is selling you a house that you can go, okay, 
this house is what she says it is. You can't say that about everybody. <laughs> yeah, you need someone yeah. who, who you know and trust who will go and, and like take you there with this tour. And he says he goes with a drone and he flies over yeah. and he shows you what's nearby and stuff. So we'll drop Sean's link in here as a shout out to yeah. him. I did email him to say we would have this talk, but he yeah. said he's, he goes to um, he goes to bed pretty early. So this yeah, is actually late for him. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking for a number of other questions that we had about this. So let's see, sorry. Uh, on the matter of renting, um, Harold wants to know if it's hard to find a rental apartment that accepts cats. I wouldn't say so. I think Italians like animals. And so I would say no. What's your experience on this? I think cats are not a problem. And if you're moving to um, to the country with cats and you're importing the cats, of course, there's a whole documentation that you have to go through. Um, dogs, on the other hand, may be harder to get a rental with a dog. I think not all rentals will accept them. Um, and also, of course, there's a practicality, like you might want one with a courtyard or a garden, which of course is a yeah, small percentage of available rentals. Um, but Especially yeah, no. now that everybody wants a courtyard or a, <laughs> or a balcony or some green space. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mm. So I think, let's see if we have any more questions about houses. We have a couple of flowing comments and, and, and mm. compliments. So thank you, Kimberly, yeah. for that. And thank you, Tammy. We really are trying to be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and once again, if anyone is listening and has questions or comments, just drop them into um, the Facebook live here and we'll bring them up on screen and try to answer. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, we're switching on to um, another question. Uh, this is a pretty uh, specific question that came to me by email from a person in California who had read an article that I published about uh, my health conditions as I actually have right. some serious health problems and I've been um, very much enjoying the, the public health care system here in Italy. Right. So um, can you talk a little bit about sort of the public and private health care options in Italy? Mm -hmm. I know this is a module, it's a whole module in your class, so right. like a, a short module. version um, <laughs> of that. And also how that applies to someone with previous, a previous condition in that kind of you know how in, in America, your insurance, if you have a previous condition, I think that's difficult. Is right. that a problem here? If you're going to move here, what kind of considerations would you want to make on that matter? I think just the main consideration you're going to want to think about is to be able to find someone and a place where you can get the care that you need, right? And so I'm sure this applies in the United States or any other place in the world that there are areas that are going to probably specialize depending on what the condition is, like how, as they say in Italian, how grave it is, um, in what kind of care that you need. Um, so for example, off the top of my head, one of my, the landlord and where we live, their daughter has a condition, I believe like the main hospital that deals with this is in the Bologna region. And so they end up traveling quite frequently to Bologna to go to visit this special hospital that is like avant-garde in treating that condition. So if it's that type of condition and it's that important, then I would say figure out where in Italy you're gonna be able to get the care that you need and go there. Generally speaking, I'm going to say that the healthcare system in Italy is superb. It does world, it does rank as like number one slash two. It's kind of tied according to the World Health Care, um, the World Health Organization. But the healthcare facilities varies greatly from north to south. So generally speaking, anywhere north of Rome up, you're going to get really, really good care. And unfortunately, generally speaking, everywhere down, it's not so much, right? And so if you have issues with your health, you're going to want to take that into consideration too. I'd say the last thing that comes to mind right now is how good is your Italian? Are you going to need to find a doctor that can speak to you in English for you to be able to fully understand what they're telling you? Because if it's your health, you're going to want to understand all the little details. Hmm? 
Yes, and and that's yeah. Language is also an issue in the north to south, and that brings up this question from Jan in Jersey, mm -hmm. who um, you know, tempted by the maybe less expensive homes in certain rural areas, maybe in Calabria. Um, mm -hmm. You think you can live really well there? Do you think it's a good idea for expats to move to a rural area in southern Italy, or not? What are maybe the considerations for her? Right. I like to say, in fact, I have this whole, let's call it, method now. And when you're deciding where you should live and deciding to move to Italy, that you should take into consideration. And I've decided to call it my Vita method, right? And for me, the V in Vita is vision. And I say vision because I say you need to think about, but really think about, what sort of life you want to live. Um, do you want to live someplace warm? Do you want to live someplace cold? Do you want to live by the sea? Do you not want to live by the sea? Do you want to have access to good health care? I think those are all the things. Infrastructure. Do you want to be able to hop on a plane and go and visit another Paris? Or do you want to be able to hop on a plane and go to London or something like that? Um, do you want to make sure you have really good internet? <laughs> Because especially if you're going to some of the rural regions, now with the whole COVID, I like to say these are some of the positives of COVID. They've been doing a better job of trying to accelerate um, getting high-speed connections to some of these smaller you know, places, but some of them don't have really good internet connections. So in terms of deciding what's the best place for you, I say, I can't make that decision for you, but I can help give you or help you think about the things that you need to take into consideration. Um, on my first masterclass in my first group coaching program, one of my students came to me and she's like, okay, Thea, but how do I decide where to live? Um, because you realize some people, they want to move to Italy and they know exactly where they're going. They're like, oh, I'm moving to Florence, I'm moving to Rome, I'm moving to Venice. And some people are like, I like Italy and I don't know where. And so what I've done is I put together a video series and where I interview people in every single region in Italy. I assure you, it's taken a lot of time to do. <laughs> and they tell you their stories about, in fact, we interviewed, I don't know if you know Skylar from um, Exao, they have an olive oil from Calabria. And she talks about how she loves Calabria but you have to take into consideration that where she is, there's only one street in and one street out. And because it's a rural area that they have a lot of tractors on the road. And, um, you know, she's like, you can just have tractor traffic, <laughs> which may not be an issue for you, um, but it may be. Um, so Calabria, non Calabria, Sicily, non Sicily, it really depends on the lifestyle that you're trying to live. And I think people just really need to sit back and think, do I really want to live in a remote place where it's going to take me five hours to get to like a major airport? Maybe you do. Like she was saying, Skylar was like, if you want to work in agriculture in Italy, Calabria may be your jam, but it may not be. Can't hear you anymore. Mm, you're right. I, yeah. I was saying, you know, it, it also depends on what kind of friendships you're going to make in certain right. places. Like Florence has a very large expat community. And maybe, okay. you know, you want to move here and you don't want to ever have anything to do with, with expats. But I can tell you after years, there's a certain comfort in, you know, meeting someone who has some common experience with the way you were brought up in the language that you were brought up in mm -hmm. so i found that after years of you know starting off i was like i'm not ever gonna be friends with americans and then in the end you know as soon as i met you i was like this is i love this person because you know we, we just start with a common base and you know we start with the right. fact that we've moved here and so um it may be challenging to move to a small town where people have known each other their whole lives and they might not speak perfect English. Um, and you know, it may be really charming and you may make some really wonderful mm -hmm. friends that way. Absolutely. Right. Um, right. But yeah, you, the go ahead. Sorry. Go no, ahead. I was going to say, I mean, maybe if you're undecided about these things and you know, you've applied the Vita method, I love that. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're still undecided. Yeah. You probably want to spend some time in one place and then decide, you know, you don't have to make the leap and buy the house and 
settle down forever. You can try it for a bit and then you can see, you know, where you want to be, right? Exactly, exactly. And because we know the personalities, because let's call it, it's almost personalities of each region is so different. I was talking in these, um, these region guide interviews, I was talking to the girl in Fruli Venezia, Giulia, and she's like, people work 60 hours a week here. And she's like, and it's normal. And I was like, we ain't doing that. <laughs> you know? like, I didn't move to Italy to work 60 hours a week. And I interviewed another woman who was living up here on the lakes and she moved down to Molise. And she's like, everyone is like, piano, 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 which means slowly, slowly. And she lived in Italy for years and moved to Molise. And she said, I did not fully grasp how different the culture would be. And so that's totally something to take into consideration as well. Well, Candace is asking about Italian language level. Mm -hmm. How was your Italian when you started studying here? Me? Yes. Um, <laughs> my Italian was... Yeah, how would I say this? I studied blah, 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 Spanish for about 12 years when I moved to Italy. And they're both Latin languages. I took a semester of Italian while I was living in Spain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I moved to Italy. <laughs> Made perfect sense, right? Um, I moved to a little town where most people didn't speak English. And for me, that was a blessing because it forced me to use the little bit that I knew um, and just I just had to go all in, you know? Um, I did have the Italian boyfriend at the point in time that I could speak to him in English, obviously. Um, and so that was my experience. I have to say that doing that kind of full immersion method, it only took me about six months, I'd say, to be fairly fluent. Um, it depends on where you are in your like language process and your language studying and how easy it's going to be for you to become fluent in the language. I'd say definitely start learning. Um, and at least when you get here, you have that basis that you can use and then apply. Um, depending on where you decide to ultimately end up, um, it determines greatly how good your Italian needs to be. So if you're in Florence, if you're in Milan, if you're in Rome, I know people who've lived here for years and they can barely just say what they need to, to like do their groceries. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but if you're going to any of those other places, you're going to need to learn the language. Yeah. I mean, my experience was similar and it's true. You can, you can get away without knowing it, um, but you're going to, and it's sometimes even still the way I express myself and I'm, I'm fluent. I have a Tuscan accent when I speak Italian, um, but Sometimes the way the things that I communicate and the way that I communicate it are just Anglo-Saxon based and so they, they still don't understand me. It doesn't matter how good your language is. I can just I can say things that are totally wrong anyway and it does not it's not you know grammatically wrong it's just wrong <laughs> so I think that's a cultural thing and you can just you know start that 20-year process of of immersive living um but yeah. i mean one thing is the better your italian is the the less painful some of the bureaucracy may be so certainly um if you know you need to understand getting through um healthcare systems like i have a friend who's italian is has been improving as she's been here she's been here for about three or four years but mm -hmm. now with you know the vaccines and working through you know the, the whether she's going to get the vaccine or not and how to get in line and those notifications to get by text message and how to sign up for that she really feels better if someone is helping her. So, you know, the better your Italian is, the better you're going to be able to navigate mm -hmm. all of these things because for the big stuff, you know, you can get your immigration lawyer, you can help have someone help you in English to purchase a house, but on a daily basis, either you got to have some really good friends um, right. and, and, you know, hopefully you will, um, or, you know, you're going to want to have Italian that's going to allow you to get through 
that kind of important daily stuff because in the end you know you go buy vegetables it doesn't really matter if you get the wrong kind of vegetable um, and you just try something new but if you need to get a vaccine you kind of want to get in line and get the right one so so yeah well start learning um there's lots of resources for that and actually um in your class you actually have uh one of the bonus things is you get a free online italian class right and yeah, to that. yeah so what we're doing is we're offering the bonus of it's not free but they get almost half off um doing italian with davide <laughs> and you can go check him out he does great little online lessons every single day and so that's one of the extra bonuses of being part of the class yeah so there's still a couple of really interesting questions and I'm not sure we'll be able to get everything um, mm -hmm. down. One of the questions uh, from Savannah, who actually I think he, Savannah, you had a question earlier. Sorry, I didn't um, get you up here. She has two questions. Let's mm -hmm. bring up the first one. The first one is that they're looking to move to Cagliari. Uh -huh. um, and so they will be living there and then applying for residency. So she wants to know first if it's possible mm -hmm. to purchase property uh, before establishing residency, and then if it's possible to also enroll children in the school prior to claiming this residency. And I think before we answer that question, let's define residency. Yeah, that's a very good point, right? So residency in Italy basically means that, how are we gonna put this? That basically you're a fiscal resident there. Um, and so, you can be legally allowed to live in Italy, but you're not necessarily a resident there, if that makes any sense. Um, and in fact, some people who live in Italy like half of the year, they decide not to become a resident in Italy because it makes more sense for them to maintain their residency in wherever they're from for tax reasons. So I guess that's the main difference between the residency slash not residency. What are we going to say about that afterwards? You don't need to be a resident in order to buy a house. You don't need to be a resident, um, but you are going to need it in order to enroll your kids into the schools because you're going to need to say, this is where I live since schooling is basically a tax related issue. Did I explain myself well? Do you want to I add think, some more into that? <laughs> I mean, I think, I think that makes sense, but I also think that, uh, gosh, yeah. Um, there may be easy, easy ways around this because I think that residency is also just a question of um, registering with your local municipality. Um, and so you need to have, I mean, first of all, if you're coming and you're renting, make sure that the place that you're renting uh, allows you to take residency, which means they have, you have to ask them, can I become a residente in your place? Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to go to the local municipality and register and say, I am living here officially. Um, mm -hmm. And not all short term co rental contracts permit this. Um, mm -hmm. But if you are moving to somewhere where you have family and you need to enroll your children in school, uh, Without saying too much, I'm sure there's a way that involves your family. <laughs> so that is all we will be able to legally say about that. Um, but no, seriously, um, you know, even if you have problems from tax, you know, becoming a tax resident or becoming mm -hmm. an official resident there, um, you know, they're going to want to put your children in school. And it's not, I'm assuming it's not going to be a problem. You just sort of have to understand and talk to the right people. Um, okay, now Sivana saying. <laughs> Sorry, I meant citizenship, but that was helpful anyway because residency is a really important issue. Right. Citizenship, no problem, right? Because yeah. all you have to be is a resident. Right, exactly. Right. Exactly. So we are okay there. I'm going to uh, bring up one sort of last sum it all up question, and then I'm just going to ask people to tell you a little bit about the class last thing. So last question comes from Claudia in Nashville who actually had a live question earlier, but she sent this to me saying, mm -hmm. she's moving here, I'm really excited for her. She's yeah. um, hoping to get an apartment. I'm not sure she has one yet, but she's kind of working on her income um, and she's an Italian citizen. Okay. Uh, uh, but, but in general, whether or not you're an Italian citizen, are there other steps that you have to take before you enter the country or a checklist that uh, you might have to follow after you arrive? Big question. Well, I mean, if you're a citizen, there's really nothing you have to do. You just 
hop on a plane and you move here. <laughs> you know, it's really because you're a citizen, you just decide where you wanna go. Um, if you are entering on a visa, which is in your case, if you're a citizen, then once you do arrive, you have to register within the first is it seven or eight days that you move here and say, I've arrived, I'd like to request my permit of stay. And that's what you have to do once you get here. Um, if you're getting a visa, then they're going to ask you to show that you have an apartment before you get here. You have to have your health insurance set up. There's a whole bunch of stuff that the consulate's going to ask you to show and demonstrate before you move. Um, does that answer that question? It might, it might. I mean, I think <laughs> every, you know, every single situation is going to have uh, its own checklist. Right. Um, you know, when you're moving into an, a new apartment, of course, you know, depending on what kind of contract and what kind of services there are, there's going to be all sorts of stuff, whether you have to put the water contract in your name. But um, yes. yeah, I would say that's, that's something that, yeah, you'd have to deal with on a, on a single um, case situation. Mm -hmm. So this is your chance. Oh. I'm now going to ask you to tell <laughs> us a little bit more about your amazing class. And I would say, I mean, I sort of feel like I'm like a not televendita, you know, like a sign up now. Um, I don't, you know, practically ever do anything commercial with my social media channels, but I really, I have so many people who love this place and who really want to come here. And I feel like you're offering them the possibility to make this dream come true. Right. And I really think that the way that your class is structured, it's it's really, it has all the answers that I wish I had yeah. before I started dealing with this. So um, this is from your website. This is the core program modules for you are mm -hmm. moving to Italy class. And if you just want to tell us a little bit about how it's structured and a little bit right. about what's in the class. Right. So like I was saying before, I have what I call my Vita module and my Vita method. It's my overarching um, structure to all of this. And then that then comes into play in the various modules. So I have now introduced a module zero, which is the vision and really getting clear about what sort of lifestyle that you want to have once you move to Italy. And then for me, the I is then the income. And so that's where we go into talking about the cost of living in various parts of Italy, because like we were saying before, it's so different. Um, Milan, more or less on par with Miami, to give you guys some perspective. But if you're going to some of those villages in Calabria, um, you know, the cost of living is significantly less. But that's when we then go into our module two, because, okay, you know what the cost of living is, and we go into like really, really good details. We talk about like from telephones to heating expenses and all that kind of stuff, but then you're gonna need to figure out, okay, if I am moving here, if I'm not on an elective visa, how am I going to finance that dream? Like what's the Italian job market like? What Italian work contracts are like? Because those are completely different doozy as well. Um, module three, we go into all that stuff like we were talking about, because I like to say that how you're going to finance your move is going to then determine what type of visa that you need, or if you're going to go the citizenship route. And I have an immigration lawyer who comes in to talk to you guys on that, um, because I like to say, I know a lot, but I wanted to get people who knew even more than I do to go into like the specific categories where I thought it was really, really necessary. Module four, renting in Italy, we go all on about because you know you have the short-term contracts, you have your four by four contracts, you have like a contratto concordato and all that kind of stuff and we'll deal with that. And the magic of finding a rental house in Italy because it's not that simple. Just finding the house here isn't that simple. And so we do that in module four. Module five is probably our most important tense our most jam-packed module because we go into everything from finding a house which like we were saying it's not that easy to closing on a house and I have an expert that comes in and talks about the whole process as well I have another person that comes in to talk about buying a house and auction here which for some people may be a viable option as well and then I have my hubby usually comes in as a guest speaker in this module. And he talks about 
just different things to think about where you're deciding where to live. Because my husband, when we were looking for our house, he was the man who was like, yeah, this house is too close to the road. And I read in this article that if you're in this distance from the house, you're gonna have this much smog and that's not good. <laughs> like in the last module, he was talking about like living in Naples and he was like, yes, but you have to take into consideration the fact that if that volcano should ever erupt, there's only one way in and only one way out. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> he's a trip. Plus he's Italian. So he's been, my husband used to be a TV producer and he did a TV show called Voglio Vivere Così. I want to live like this basically. And he basically has traveled all over Italy filming for that. Plus, like I said, we have the bonus, one of the bonuses, which is the region's guides, where we interview both expats and locals on talking about what they like and what they dislike about where they live. So that's the whole buying a home in Italy module. Then we have Italian taxes. Like I said, I found an incredible person who actually teaches at Università Bocconi. He is an immigration attorney and specializes in Italian taxes, especially for expats. And so he goes and he explains the incentives that are involved. He explains just Italian taxes. Um, he touches on some of the taxes on the tax codes, if you wanna open up a business here. And he's also good at helping you decide if you even want to open up a business here. But some of that more personal stuff, you just wanna to talk to him privately about. And then the healthcare, we talk about I don't know, like for example, when I moved here, you have to keep all your medical files. And I didn't know that. And that was just the strangest thing for me. So we talk about things like some of the, or WhatsApping your doctor. Do you WhatsApp your doctor, Alexandra? <laughs> and I thought that was so strange. I do, only the specialist, because my regular doctor, I only recently found out that he has email. It's, right. kind of, it's really helpful, but yeah. So we talk about that. We talk about different hospitals in terms of which hospitals are better than others. And this isn't like my personal opinion on this. I'm bringing in like stats and data from other places um, to like illustrate that for you guys. And then the last module is on Italian bureaucracy. And that's our wrap up module slash my way of saying, okay, guys, breathe. There is going to be a lot involved with the bureaucracy, but I say try and try again. You know, <laughs> And at first you don't succeed, try again, and you will eventually get there. So those are the core modules of my program. I have a few bonuses. So I like to say this is all the things you should be thinking about and planning before you move. And then I have a bonus, which is called the, bon uh, the basics, which talks about how do I get a Wi-Fi? What are my different options for my bank account? How do I um, like get my permesso di soggiorno and all of that stuff? And then we have the regions guide as a bonus. We also have a bonus of $750 from um, the Italian on tour because they're in Le Marche and Le Marche is considered the best region to retire for expats. So if you wanted to go in and talk to Giovanni and Chantal about that and visit Le Marche with them, you guys can. And I don't remember if there's any other bonuses in there. There's obviously the bonus with Davide. And, so <laughs> and there's a bonus from me because oh, I have roped in my friend Lisa, who's a lovely watercolor artist. And I will be personally sending people who sign up through my link to um, have this, this set of lovely watercolors. So there's one that involves wisteria and hence the background in our chat mm -hmm. here and one with Italian types of coffee. So you can find those on my blog. Um, and Jen wants to know how long is each module? So how is the course structured? So the course is structured that every week for the eight weeks, you guys get a new module. I do it that way because I don't wanna overwhelm you guys with too much content right off the bat. So, um, you get your first module on Saturday, and then the following Saturday, we have the first call, our first live call discussing the module, the content from the previous Saturday. And then after that call, 
when we get off because it's like an automated service. You get your next set of content and you all have all week to go in through and study the stuff that I've provided for you guys, which is a mixture of things to read and either audio or videos that I've put together or of the people, the smart experts that I've had come on board. And so basically that's it. You know, every week you get something you get to study on your own. And at the end of the week, you guys can come on a live call with me and ask me any questions or ask the people who have brought on board to explain those for you guys. Those are so pretty. Can't hear you. There I go, muting myself again. But I was, <laughs> you're, you're fantastic because you totally just kept talking as your background changed. Um, <laughs> these are some of the coffee, coffee symbol, the coffee uh, paintings from my friend Lisa. And I thought these are just really cute inspirations. Mm -hmm. I bought them up. Um, mm. Super. Well, you know, this sounds really, really complete. And mm. I'm impressed. If thank I were moving to Italy, I would be doing your class. Um, and I, I want to thank everyone for sending in their questions. And I hope that this has been helpful mm -hmm. for everybody else. And I mean, I'm always open to helping people. And I, you know, receive a lot of emails and I always do my best to answer them. Mm -hmm. uh, one by one, I always take some time to figure out, you know, what you are, um, what you need, and if I can do anything to help people. But of course, this is a really complete class, and it certainly does mm -hmm. everything that I can't do personally, you know, just one by one by email. So great job coming Thank up with you. all of this, and Thank I just you. can't wait to get up to Milan and hang out with you Yay! and your husband, who sounds like a lark. <laughs> <laughs> He's a trip and a half. <laughs> is a chip and a half. So thank you so much for this hour. Look, one hour on the dot. Like, it is yay. now officially yes. bedtime. Yes. Thank you so much, Alexandra. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and thank all of you guys for coming because I can't see you all, but thank you. <laughs> yes, we can't, but here, and thank you, Jen, and thanks to here, Mary Jane, who's saying it's helpful mm -hmm. to have people, and everybody else who has hung out and listened to us for this whole hour mm -hmm. on this wonderful rainy Monday night. Yay, so, thank you. Arrivederci, and yeah. to everyone thinking of moving, I would say, you know, pursue your dreams, and it can be done. It can be done. We've done it, and we didn't have help. <laughs> I didn't even plan on this. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Ciao, everyone. Take care. Bye.